Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. What am I think? What am I think? You're listening to Popeye News Links. This is the Admiral Tibet who I represent. And remember, the time is so serious. Contankerous and dangerous. This is Popeye News Links. Yeah, I watch Papa's mama. Hmm? Where I watch? Papa. Greetings, greetings, viewers and subscribers. Question: Did you watch this morning's video? Did you listen to the conversation I had this morning with the daughter of that female on your screen? You did. Well, guess what? By now, you're supposed to know how we do things over here. So, we try to turn over every stone, meaning. We not left no stone unturned. Early tomorrow morning, you're going to be hearing another side of that story. You're not going to want to miss this one. Remember me tell you. In the news today, this one took place early this morning. Friday, October 25, about minutes to 4 o'clock. It took place at Garland District in the parish of St. James. We are learning that a team of police officers acting on intelligence. They went to a house in the area in search of that St. James police most wanted hoodlum on your screen. His name is Nico Maxwell, but he's popularly known as Nico. Nico is 29 years old and he's living at Flamstead Garden in the parish of St. James. I've carried some stories about Nico on this channel before. He was wanted by the police for murder and wounding with intent. Those offenses were committed on September 4, 2022, over two years ago, at Germantown in St. James. We are told that the police, they went to the home of a female who Nico is said to be in a relationship with. The house was searched and bingo. Both Nico and the female they were found inside a bedroom in the house. The bedroom was searched and bingo again. One Gerson Regard MC 9mm pistol with the serial number intact. Affixed with a magazine containing 17 rounds of 9mm cartridges were found on top of a barrel hidden under some clothes. Both Nico and the female they were taken into police custody. As soon as they are charged, I'm going to be telling you the name of the female and I'll also be giving you the full details surrounding the charges. Nico is facing. Stand by for that. But intelligencers, big up on yourself. And St. James Police, job well done. In this next report, a shop owner who is almost 59 years old. He has been slapped with firearm and wounding charges and the allegation is that this is because he and a 51 year old man they were fighting over a female his name is colin reed but he's popularly known as shortman shortman will be 59 years old on january 19 and like i said he's a shopkeeper living at whitehall in negril in the parish of westmoreland the allegation is that Early Friday morning, October 18, about 2.30, 59-year-old short man and the 51-year-old man, they were at the Negril Craft Market when they had an argument over a female. That argument turned into a fight and it is being alleged that short man, he pulled a gun and used it to hit the other man in his head, causing a wound. It is also alleged that short man, he used the same illegal gun to hit the man to the right side of his face, causing swelling. The man ran away and eventually he made a report to the police. Short man, he was picked up and he was pointed out to the police. He was subsequently charged, so he'll be going to the courts shortly. In this next report, listen this now. On Friday morning, October 18, a man who is the owner of a Blue Honda Stream motor car. He met up with that guy on your screen. Now, that guy, his name is Micah 
Ennis. He is 25 years old and he's living at Paradise District in the Carisbrook area of St. Elizabeth. The allegation is that the man, he met up with Micah in Maypen and he went into a bank to transact some business. He left Micah with the car. It is alleged that when the man returned from inside the bank, he did not see Micah or the car. He called Micah's phone without success. As a result, the man, he made a report to the police. About minutes to 5 o'clock, that same Friday afternoon, a team of police officers, they were on patrol along the Old Abba Road in the vicinity of Nightingale Grove in the parish of St. Catherine when they saw the said Honda Stream motor car that was reported stolen in Maypen. The police, they signaled the car to stop, but it is said that the driver, he disobeyed and sped off. The police gave chase and it is alleged that hoodlums in the car opened gunfire at the police who returned the fire. It is said that the driver, he ended up losing control of the Honda Stream which crashed into some bushes. The police, they are alleging that one of the hoodlums ran from the car, making good his escape. The driver, he was trapped inside the car and he turned out to be innocent looking Micah. The car was searched and bingo. The police, they found one 9mm pistol with the serial number intact. Affixed with a magazine containing three 9mm rounds. The police are alleging that the gun, it was found at Micah's foot on the floor of the car. Micah, he was taken out of the car by the police and he was taken into police custody. He was subsequently charged yesterday following a question and answer session in front of his lawyer. So, he'll be going to the courts shortly. In this next report, a 27-year-old guy, he has been slapped with some serious charges. His name is Marlando Spencer. He has addresses in both Runaway Bay in Senton and Frankfield in Clarendon. He has been charged for one, wounding with intent with the use of a prohibited weapon. Two, possession of a prohibited weapon. Three, unauthorized possession of ammunition. And four, using a prohibited weapon to commit a felony. This is due to an incident that took place last month on Saturday afternoon, September 7, about 2 o'clock. It took place in the vicinity of a tire shop at Runaway Bay in Senton. The allegation is that a guy in his mid-30s, he's popularly known as Creamy. It is said that Creamy, he was standing in the vicinity of a tire shop when a white Toyota Axio motor car drove up and stopped. It is alleged that Marlando, he jumped from the Axio with a gun in his hand ran up to Creamy and fired one shot at him, hitting him to the left side of his jaw. Creamy, he fell to the ground and Marlando, he jumped back into the axio making good his escape. Creamy, he was rushed to hospital where he was treated and admitted in a serious condition. The police, they were called and they commenced investigations. Marlando, he was picked up by the police and he was pointed out on an identification parade. So, he was subsequently charged after he was questioned in the presence of his lawyer. Marlando, he'll be facing the courts shortly. In this next report, now, I carried a report on Wednesday about a young man who was electrocuted. There he is on your screen. His name is Tajay Williams. He was 24 years old and he lived at Thompson Lane in the Waterworks area of Westmoreland. Now, we did some digging and this is what we found out. Tajay, he had a medical issue. It is said that Tajay, he had frequent seizures. As a result, Tajay, he was mostly at home. Our information is that some persons in the Thompson Lane area... They are thief in electricity. Some of these wires that they run from the JPS wires to their home ran through the yard where Tajay lived. One of those wires apparently got shifted and the exposed wire, 
it was touching on a sheet of zinc that made up the outside bathroom at Tajay's home. I had said on Wednesday that Tajay, he had gone into the bathroom to bed, but that is not so. We are told that Tajay, he was outside cleaning a pair of shoes for someone when he touched the zinc and he was electrocuted. We are told that it was a child in the house who saw Tajay lying on the ground and made an alarm. Tajay, he was rushed to hospital where he died whilst he was being treated. Sad indeed. Now, condolences to Tajay's family, especially his mother. Let's swap. Anyhow, this one, it took place Wednesday night, October 23, about 9.30. It took place at Tucker Irwin in the parish of St. James. We are learning that a guy, his name is Angel Sadler. Two weeks ago, on Friday, October 11, Angel, he celebrated his 29th birthday and he lived in the Tucker Irwin area. We are told that about 7 to 8 years ago, Angel, he was shut up and seriously injured in the area. Wednesday night. Angel, he was standing in a shop in the area when a hoodlum entered the shop, pulled a gun and opened gunfire hitting Angel to his upper body. The hoodlum, he then ran out of the shop and made good his escape. Relatives, they rushed with Angel to the Cornwall Regional Hospital where he was pronounced D.E.A.D. on arrival. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, Two 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all. So that whenever we drop a new video, you'll be one of the first to be notified. In the final story for today, we are told that over 100 bullets were fired in the Campbell's Lane area of Mount Salem yesterday morning. Thursday, October 24. It all started about 9.30. We are told that a man, his name is Donovan Nelson Hills, but he was popularly known as Pepper. Pepper, he celebrated his 52nd birthday last week, Tuesday, October 15, and he lived in the Green Pond area of St. James. Now, what we are learning is that Pepper and his spouse, they drove from Green Pond to Campbell's Lane to go and fix an item. As Pepper exited the vehicle, at least Five hoodlums were in a yard to the neighboring yard where Pepper was going. They jumped over the fence and they went onto Campbell's Lane. The hoodlums, who were armed with rifles and handguns, they opened gunfire hitting Pepper all over his body, killing him on the spot. We are told that a youngster, he saw what was happening and one of the hoodlums opened gunfire at him. The youngster, he managed to run away, making good his escape. The hoodlums, who are all members of the KDF, them call themselves Keaton Lane Defense Force. They then walked to a nearby house where they fired a barrage of gunshots on that house, causing damage to a window at the front. Remember now, there is a zone of special operation, otherwise known as Zozo in the Mount Salem area and the soldiers manning the checkpoint, they could hear all the bullets being fired. As a matter of fact, we are told that the soldiers, they saw the group of five hoodlums armed with guns running away along a section of the Keaton Lane Road. It is said that the soldiers challenged the hoodlum who opened gunfire at them. The soldiers, they returned the fire and chased the hoodlums who ran into a yard and escaped over a fence. The soldiers, they continued chasing the hoodlums and that one on your screen. He ran into a house and he was held. The rifle that 
he had, it was also seized in the house by the soldiers. His name is Akeem Burnett, but he is also known as Little J. He is 19 years old. We are told that the police and the soldiers, they carried out a further search in the Keaton Lane area and one Glock 9mm pistol with the serial number intact, affixed with a magazine containing two 9mm rounds and eight Molotov cocktails were seized. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Papa News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. With silver sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. Hey, crime it a mash up Jamaica. Criminals them a mash up Jamaica. Jamaicans mash up Jamaica. Jamaica, Jamaica, the land of the sun Jamaica become now the land